Have you ever thought about how everything we do, from turning on a light to putting on makeup, is fueled by the dead? I bet you haven't. The world as we know it is built because something died. And that something is mostly really old plants. It might be a little hard to imagine, especially with all the buildings and modern tech around us, that there was a time where dinosaurs roamed the face of the earth and if we travel even further back, earth was a lot hotter and covered by mostly swamps and marshes. As you can imagine, plants and creatures thrived in these wetlands, but when they died, as most things do, they sank all the way to the bottom. And over millions of years, they broke down and compressed under layers of sand and minerals and thus fossil fuels were formed. Kinda eerie, isn't it? To be powered by the dead. Some people are even smoking the dead. The impact of Africa's worst drug epidemic deepens. Disturbing reports have emerged about the newest ingredient, human bones. Coal, oil, and natural gas were formed because of organic matter, temperature, time, and pressure. So how did any of those factors contribute to the creation of fossil fuels? I'm glad you asked. So coal hardened from plants under intense pressure and heat. Oil came from smaller creatures like zooplankton, plants, and algae, breaking down under pressure. And our last fossil fuel, natural gas, formed the same way as oil, but with even more heat and pressure. Fossil fuels are important for almost everything we do in the modern world. They were cheap and could power transportation, electricity generation, and industries. This is why, traditionally, fossil fuels have been the top energy choice. While burning these fossil fuels made it possible to industrialize, they also had a hidden downside that we didn't know about. They release a heck of a lot of old trapped carbon into the air, the stuff that made the planet hot. They were great for plants a million years ago, but not so great for life now, especially as we're used to a cooler climate now. This is the main reason we're pushing harder, to find renewable energy sources that don't change the climate. Another major problem with fossil fuels is that they're non-renewable, meaning we're running out because they take millions of years to form. And once they're gone, they're gone. As we dig deeper to find more, it gets riskier and more expensive. So how long do we actually have until fossil fuels run out? It's tough to pinpoint exactly how much fossil fuel we have left because it depends on things like how fast we use them and if we find more. According to the International Energy Agency, we do have a lot left, maybe even enough for decades or even centuries. However, as we use up the easy to get stuff, we'll have to work harder and spend more to find and extract what's left. But worrying about if we run out isn't really the biggest problem. The bigger problem is what happens to the climate when we do burn more. The climate has already changed, changing weather patterns and causing disasters because of the fuels we've burnt. And if we continue to do so, it'll get even worse. That's why we must push for cleaner energy sources that don't produce harmful emissions, like these old dead plants do. We can use things like solar, wind, hydroelectric and geothermal, which is an added plus, won't run out. But it really starts with us. As a species, we've gone grave looting for far too long. Let's educate ourselves and take action while we still can. Learn more about the climate. They are things you can do about it. Follow us at climatecomz.a and visit us at climatecomz.co.za to find out how.